In this movie, we'll learn how to attach event listeners to display objects. Event listeners are the primary means for incorporating interaction into applications. There are lots of different event listeners in Corona, and we'll be exploring and using them from here on out. On the screen, I've got a display object assigned to the variable foo. In this lesson, we'll attach a touch event listener to foo, and we'll also attach a runtime enter frame listener to the application. The purpose here is just to show you how to attach event listeners. We'll cover enter frame and touch listeners in greater detail later in the course. Let's start by adding a touch event listener to the foo object. First thing we'll do is type foo colon add event listener. It's important to remember to use a colon and not a dot. Now for the arguments, the first argument will be the event to listen for. We'll listen for the touch event. The second argument is the callback function. Here we're going to create the callback function on the foo object. So we'll type foo. Now above this line, and it's very important that you put it above the line and not below, we'll create the following function. Function foo colon touch and then in parentheses we'll place an E, and then type end. So here's what's going on. On the foo object, we're creating a method called touch. We're using the colon because we'll want to use the self keyword within this method. This will allow us to access the object rather easily within the method. E is representative of the event object that's passed from the event listener. Throughout the entire course, I'll use the variable E within event listeners to represent the event object. There are three main phases to a touch event. There's the began phase, or when the touch initially hits the screen, the moved phase, or when the touch moves across the screen, and the ended phase, or when the touch is removed from the screen. We'll code a series of if-else statements to accommodate each of the phases. First, we'll code if, then else if, then else if, then end. I like to create my entire conditional structures at once, so that way I don't forget to end them. Now the first will be if e dot phase double equals began. So the dot phase property allows you to access the phase of the touch event. So if e dot phase double equals began, that means we're in the began phase. So we'll print touch began. Now, we'll go to the next phase. If e dot phase double equals moved, then we're in the phase where the touch is moving across the screen. Print touch moved. Finally, we'll deal with the ended phase. We'll also incorporate the phase canceled, though that phase is rarely called. Else if e dot phase double equals ended, then type the keyword or e dot phase double equals canceled. And we'll print touch ended. Finally, outside of the conditional statement, we'll want to type the following return true. This tells our application that the touch has been handled and the touch doesn't need to propagate to any other object. A case where you might want the touch to propagate to other objects is when you have two objects overlaying each other and you want the touch to affect both of the objects. In that particular case, you would not return true. Most of the time, however, you will want to return true. Now let's take a look at the result in the simulator. We'll also need to bring up the terminal because we've coded print statements. So now we'll touch the foo object and we see that the phases are being printed to the window. Another way to accomplish the same result is to use a generic function to handle the touch event. Let's change our code to do this. So we'll create a function called handle touch. Local function handle touch and we'll pass in E in the parentheses and then end. Now, We'll change the second argument of the touch event listener. And we'll copy our code from foo colon touch and place it within the handle touch method. 
save it, and then take a look at the result. For now, we'll get rid of the handle touch method and move on. To attach event listeners to the system as a whole, we'll use the runtime object. Let's type out runtime, notice the capital R, colon add event listener, and then we'll pass in for the first argument, enter frame. For the second argument, we'll create a method called back and forth. The enter frame event may be familiar to you if you come from ActionScript. The enter frame event fires with each frame that's rendered. The default frame rate in Corona is 60 frames a second. So enter frame will fire 60 frames a second or relatively close. I say relatively close because it is possible to create computationally heavy code that slows down the system and there slows down the frame rate. With the back and forth method that we'll create, we'll animate the foo object. Let's begin by creating the shell of the back and forth method. So above the runtime event listener, we'll type local function back and forth. Then pass into parentheses e and end. Above this function, we'll create three variables. Local i equals zero. Local n as a forward reference. That means we'll be able to access it within back and forth, but it still remains a local variable. And local pi equals math.pi. Here, we're caching the result of math.pi. This will save us some cycles in computation. Now, within back and forth, we'll code the following. Each frame will want to increment i. i equals i plus 1. Then, what we'll be doing is we'll be changing the position of i on the horizontal axis, and we'll be scaling it. But so that the motion is really smooth and has a sense of easing to it, we're going to use a cosine function. So this next part will be heavy in terms of math, but follow along and I'll explain with each step. The first thing we need to do is we need to take i, which is being incremented, and convert it to radians, because math.cosine expects radians. So, we'll set n equal to, within parentheses, i divided by 360, and then that unit multiplied by, within parentheses, 2 times pi. Remember that we set pi at line 28. Now, we need to find the cosine of n n equals math dot cos, and in parentheses, n. Finally, we'll add the cosine of n to the current position of foo. So, foo dot x equals foo dot x plus n. Before going any further, let's take a look at the result. So you can see there's this really nice back and forth motion that's not linear and that's because we're using this cosine function. Okay, let's take it a step further. We'll rotate foo with each frame. foo.rotation equals i, and then we'll type the percent sign 360. The percent sign is a modulo. What this means is that as i counts up, when it hits 360, it'll go back to zero. In case you wanted to see this happen, you can always type print foo.rotation. We'll save this and now take a look at the result in the simulator. And let's bring up the terminal too. So you can see that it's counting up and then it hits 360 and goes back to zero. Finally, we'll scale foo up and down and we'll scale it by n since we'll want to use that cosine motion. So, foo.xscale equals n times 2. foo.yscale equals n times 2. So we're using a multiplier to make it a bit more dramatic. Take a look at the result. And now we can see that foo is bouncing back and forth. To remove an event listener, you simply need to call remove event listener on the object that's currently listening for the event listener. So we'll add a remove event listener to the ended portion of the touch phase on the object. 
To make touching the object easier, we'll comment out the scaling. We'll use a Lua multi-line comment, which is dash dash and two left brackets to start and two right brackets to end. Now, we'll head to the touch event listener, and in the ended phase, we'll type the following. Runtime, colon, remove event listener, and for the first argument, we'll type enter frame, and then we need to type the name of the callback function, back and forth. If we go to run this right now, we'll get an error. That's because back and forth hasn't been defined yet in the code. It's defined on line 31, but we're removing the event listener at line 19. We can solve this with a forward reference. We'll type local, back and forth, then, in the back and forth method, we'll delete the local keyword. Let's save it and take a look at the result. Now, when I tap the object, the animation stops. This is because the enter frame listener has been removed when the touch ended. The process is the same for moving the touch event listener if you wanted to do so. You would simply call foo colon remove event listener, and then pass in touch and foo as the listener for the event. This ends our lesson on how to attach event listeners to display objects.